Welcome back. Part six now of the work on this 8.8cm um, .8 flat gun on a 9 ton Vomag truck. So uh, what a model this is. It is um, it's beautifully moulded. It's very nicely done but the instructions, oh dear. And we're going to cover some of that now. We, we, we've covered a lot of stuff in, um, in the previous parts of this video and things seem to be getting progressively worse, I must be honest. Uh, so if you remember at the end of part five, we talked about how I built this cab unit up and everything. I added some stiffeners underneath and I'm just trying to basically um, trying to ascertain where on earth these panels here go. Now, these panels here are F9 and F10, I believe. Yes, F9 and F10. And these are the lower engine side covers you can see here. OK, now what they would have you do in the instructions they would have you build this up with this upper panel here which is the engine side cover you can see it there upside down uh, have you build that onto there with the straps and everything holding it down and then um, fit that on but there's no way that you could know how to fit them or where they would go well, I've done all this work so that you don't have to and basically um, if you fit the if you fit the radiator dry fit the radiator whatever and fit them as a recess in the radiator around the front and there's a recess on the back of that panel. If you fit them so they're butted up against the radiator and that the top sides here, where I'm pointing to now, here and here, you need them to be flush with the sides of the, just to pull that up, I don't want to touch. And what I've done here, I've put a load of cement in there to get a really strong joint. And what I'm probably going to do is probably put a bit of plastic rod in there and melt it in or, or, or it may not be necessary because once this bulkheads in you can glue it to that now you may also notice there is a slight gap on this side in between this panel and the bulkhead and on this side it's a lovely snug fit this is one of the reasons I'm glad I've done this because if you remember I said what happens this rear bodywork, which is now all built up, you can see that in part six as well, part five as well. Um, when that's butted up to here, you can see these, these ribs across the bottom of this bulkhead here. They go into those parts there. OK, now we're going to get this central so that all those ribs line up. And then we've got four little tabs on here that line up with the chassis. So everything's good there. And you can see that when I butt this up, those tabs are actually stopping me from pushing this all the way forward. OK. Now, you can also see, I mean, you, maybe you can't see, I can because I can see the light through it. Here, it's kind of touching and there there's a tiny gap. OK. So what I'm going to do, because we do have... We do have some movement here. I'm going to make sure it's nice and square here, nice and centered. OK. And we can see that I don't if I put a light under it, you'll probably be able to see it. Let me kind of have a torch a second. I'll try and hold all this together. Mr. Unprepared as usual. If I put a light underneath it, you may be able to see. There you go. Now you can see it's tapered. OK, you can see under the on the right hand side here, it's almost touching on that side. It's not. And it's funny, we got a gap there and not on that side. If we grab a square. And we hold a square against the back of the bulkhead. We can see. That that cab is not square to the chassis it's it needs to go forward on that side so on the back on the bottom of this bulkhead there are two square lugs that fit into two lugs in the chassis now i know the chassis is square because i can check that here i can show you the chassis is square by doing this okay so so now we know there the chassis is square okay but basically, the bulkhead, the, the, the slots in the chassis must be out of position or 
my square is not square <laughs> so whatever but um it is absolutely imperative that this chassis is dead square and we can see there it is square so we can also check i mean there's, there's hardly anywhere where you can get a square on this thing because it's covered in lugs but um the, the chassis is square um i mean if it's not we can we can do this you can see we can flex it pull it about but i'm 99.9 percent .9 sure this chassis is square i mean you can see there i'm putting it against the back of those two lugs and it's absolutely fine if anything that one's slightly forward which is the opposite of what we've got we th this is that way we need to go that way so you know it's um it's easy to cure very easy to cure yeah now if anything that one's forward on there as well so we're not it's not really a good thing to do to use these things as a reference but what we can do to improve the situation is get rid of this tape which is totally utterly useless because it doesn't hold anything down we'll get rid of that as well and don't forget when you fit this side panel here make sure you've got the steering column at the right height and to do that you need the bulkhead in place so there we go um, Looks like I've got a little bit of cement on that one. Oh dear. Knife, please. Knife, nurse. I don't know how I've managed to get cement all the way up there. There we go. That's going to pull back now. Okay, so it's e easy to cure. What we'll do, we will, it's this one here, isn't it? We will just take some meat off of the front, because it's not very much. We'll take some meat off of the front of that lug. There. Just like so. So it's, it's not a big fix, but it's something worth checking. And the trouble is, the way they would have you build this, where you put this all onto that, then you come to fit this at the back, it's not going to fit to the floor. So there we go. So now we should be able to fit this in, Let's put the steering column through. Come on. There we go, that's gone in. So now we can push this forward. Peg it there. Now this side's popped out. It keeps wanting to pop out for some reason. I don't know why. It just doesn't want to stay in there. So we can peg that one there. Okay, to hold it down. Just put that up against there like so. And now when we fit this rear body, we should find. Here we go, it's parallel now. So what we need to do is remove this lug from here. To allow the, the, the rear body to come forward. It's literally nothing it's it's probably not even ten thou but it's a gap that we don't want we do not want a gap there just sand that nice and smooth get it looking pretty there we go so now we can fit this rear body Butt it up for some reason. Oh, I've got it off centre, that's why. For some reason, it's not butting up. It's butting up parallel, but it's not butting up. So I'm going to take a nice big flat sanding stick and just check that none of these bits here are sitting. 
stopping it from going up. Like I say, it's literally a gap that you can just see light through, so it's not really worth worrying about. There we go. And now, with that on there, it's nice and square. Uh, we do have a gap there still, and I can see what it is. That is not square. So, yeah, I know what's happening here. Because I've got these pegs, it's pulling down on the floor and it's collapsing the tub. So if I take these pegs out, and I hold it together like that, when I put this body on, there you go. You can see now it butts up beautifully. So there, that's, that's what's happening. What's happening is I'm putting those pegs on, it's squeezing, it's pulling the, the bulkhead down. So you now you can see we have a perfectly fitting body, a perfect gap here, or no gap, no gap there. So like I said, I'm coming, I'm using this as my datum and I'm going forward from there and back from there. And like, like I've said earlier, I'm tempted to glue this together and have the whole body as one piece that's just going to drop onto the chassis. And the only joint will be there where there's a natural break anyway. So uh, yeah, wish me luck with that. Right, so we can remove this again. We've now got our steering column there just asking to get broken off, so we'll have to be real careful with that. And just as a little check, I'm going to take my tape, remove that radiator, remove the radiator, and just to show you, we can still fit the engine. If I could find the centre of that prop shaft, there we go. The engine still goes in, so um, that's great. And you can see now with that side panel removed, you can see all that detail on that engine in there. So um, very, very nice indeed. And we should still be able to get the exhaust in there as well. Let's just give it a quick check. Uh, the exhaust come out here, isn't it? Here. Wrong side, Nigel. There we go. So you can see we can still get the exhaust in there. And that's all going to fit in there lovely. So, uh, yeah. Um, Marco has been, been in touch with me via Facebook. Um, I don't do Facebook, guys. So if, if you're thinking about... Getting in touch with me on Facebook and stuff, become a friend, I probably won't respond because I just don't have the time to answer all the emails I get. And then you got Facebook as well. And, oh, just, yeah, I don't physically have the time. I'm sorry. Um, but Marco has been in touch with me on Facebook and he has basically um, spoken to Dazwerk and he's got this kit and he's not at all happy. Um, I mean, one thing he's pointed out, the front of this engine is just floating around. Um, I think there should be a mount on the back of that cross member there that goes into that big melt on the front of the engine but they haven't done it the only way that the front of the engine is connected to the, anything is via the um, coolant hoses which is which is obviously totally inaccurate um, but also um, not very strong and as you can see we're going to have to bend that one forward that's not an issue we just put a bit, bit of uh, glue around the bottom soften it and then just put it forward but there we are so that's how all that's going to go and um, all lovely, isn't it? Isn't that see? And we can also see now that if I put the body on, put the body on here, it's roughly in position, and I drop the radiator in. Okay, then you can see that when we put the bonnet on, or the hood, it's all going to fit beautifully. For some reason that body's being pushed back, probably with the steering column. There we go, you can see it's all a, a lovely fit on there. And if we do decide to leave the side panels off, then that's all the detail we're going to see. I don't want to tip it right over because it's going to fall apart, but there we go. Okay, what I may actually do is to keep it accurate, I may actually attach these side panels to here. To there and then have that lifting off so we can look at the engine i don't know we shall see but uh there we go 
So what we're going to do next? I, I need to leave these. Um, I need to leave these side panels to dry. <clears throat> they need to be absolutely solid because they're still a bit soft. I glued them together about two hours ago, um, and as I pointed out before, those rivets you can still see them. And of course, another beauty of using those anise rivets uh, is their resin. So when they get the cement on them, it doesn't affect them. So there we are. Right. So what's next? Just adding a little bit of something now, which is really quite pointless, but it's a bit of detail nonetheless. As you can see, this bonnet, the original bonnet without the armour plate on, has hinges. So basically, underneath, rather than having just these four ejector pin marks to look at, I thought I'd put a, a cut a split light in there where it actually hinges up. So how do I do that? Well, we need to know the position is right. So when we turn it over... We can get a piece of masking tape, just a piece of old scabby old masking tape that you've already used. Lay that over the top like that. So now we've got our positions marked at the ends. And we're going to grab a piece. This is the um, this is the high Q scribing tape. I think it's high Q. Yes, high Q parts. Get this from Premium Hobbies. Um, this is the six millimeter by three meters, and there's also there's two rolls in there, and you also get the three millimeters, the orange one. You've seen me use this on various occasions, um, or you can use Dymo tape, um, but it's uh, it's very hard to get a straight edge. And I was going to use a rule, but it's very hard to get a straight edge because it keeps wanting to roll down the radius. Always remember when you are scribing, don't ever, don't use an aluminium rule for scribing because basically you're going to just going to keep wearing that away and end up with a a non-straight rule. You always use steel. Um, so we're going to lay this tape down here and hopefully it's going to stick. In fact, I'll lay it on the outside. So, no, I will lay it on the inside because if I put it on the outside, it's got to go up that curve. And I'm going to grab a pair of tweezers and just pull the end around. Like so. And then push it down. This is the second time I've used it, so it may not be that sticky. It doesn't need to be precise, it just needs to be in the right sort of spot. And then what we can do is come along with our scriber and just scribe like so and then turn it around so that you get the line going right off the end. And then we can remove the tape, remove the scribing tape and there we are. Job done. And if you want them a bit deeper, you've already got the lines there, you can now come along and just follow that line and there you go simple as that there you go so that's your lines in there, lining up with the hinges, so just adds a bit of interest if you look under there, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, you might think it's absolutely pointless, but there we go. Right, I've just fitted these two parts here. This is C29 and C30. They go on the front top corners of the bulkhead, so uh, I fitted them now. Um, rather than, they, they tell you to fit this one in step 10, and then this one in about step 13 or something. Uh, so I fitted them both now because what I'm going to do is put a drop of super glue on the front of them and I can sand them flush. I don't think they're supposed to be. Let's just have a look at the image on the front. It looks like they're part of the windscreen mount, but uh, I don't know. maybe they're supposed to be separate. We'll see, maybe later. Um, that one's not quite square, actually. Just give that a little tweak at the top. There we go, that's better. So, um, yeah, we'll see on the real photos if they're supposed to be visible or not. What I do want to do, before I've got all these bits here to go in. There's something else I'm going to talk about in a minute. I want to get rid of all these um, these uh, little areas, these, this seam around the edge here, so that you can't see it. I've also got some glue there where it managed to... I must have dropped some on there when I was gluing those panels in. I had all this in place but for when I glued these panels here in. So, um... Right, I want to talk about something else as well. You know, I've been going on and on and on and on about connection points. Like you see, you've got these tiny little, you know, <laughs> this absolutely minuscule little indentation for the headlight and the here's for the mudguards and everything. When you come to the bulkhead, 
this is the um, this is the horn. So we've got the actual horns trumpet, if you like, there, and then we've got the actual body of the horn. And if you look at the hole, we have a pin. We have a nice big square pin to go into the horn, like that. Okay. Not that the radial position of the horn matters at all. It could have just been a it just could have been a circular pin. And then here we've got another great big nice square big hole for the thing to mount in. So you know, and then when it comes to bits like this, we've got this little box, this little regulator box, whatever is going to go on the bulkhead. And you can see you've got these two nice big location tabs. We've got a nice big hole in the back for that to fit on. You know, it's just ludicrous. Great big tabs on there for this piece on the top to go on here. I, you know, I ask you. Um, two different designers perhaps working on the same project? Not sure. This piece here is clearly some sort of gauge or something. Whoops, it'd be interesting to see if we've got a decal for it. That almost went in the super glue then, didn't it? Um, and that's just going to go on the inside. In fact, it's here, it's called G81, and it's got a little tab on it which goes down. So what I'm going to do is attempt to get this in position. So we'll put a drop of cement. I won't use quick setting because it will dry before I get anywhere near it. It's got a nice big drop of cement in there so it stays wet for a little while. And then this is going to go into there. Which is going to be easier said than done. I should have done this before I put the bulkhead on really. There we go. There we are, that's in there. So that's good. Is that actually in there correct or not? I'm not sure I've got that in there right. Back in a sec. Okay, so we've um, we've done the super glue around there now. I've got the horn glued together. So we'll wait for that to dry and then we can sand that out and blend it. Um, this part inside here, which is, I'm all over the place now with these instructions, which is here, C15 and G41, they form the base for the seat. Now they've got this cutout at the back, um, and you can see how it is in the instructions, it's just like a square cutout. I've removed the top corner uh, because the seat sits down on there like that, and I'm worried that if I actually glue this in, just so I can paint it all grey, I'm worried that I won't be able to get the seating because these ridges will be in the way. So what I've done is just cut that corner off so that the seat will sort of drop down on if you like. So we need to get this glued in. So, sorry, cemented in. I get told off if I use the word glue. I've just put my finger in that super glue, which is stupid because I keep getting bloody fingerprints everywhere. Um, here we go. So, put a drop of cement down in there. I don't think it went anywhere near it. Put a drop down in there. Oh Christ. Excuse my blasphemous comment. So why don't I just put some cement in there first? and then we'll get that other piece where is it gone it was here just now where's it gone who's nicked that then yes <laughs> that's crazy i don't know where that's gone there it is Jess did have it it was on the floor right next to a bed which is just down here under my feet this pco g41 it's actually a little bit too thick to fit into that groove so 
I've just sort of sanded a bit off the bottom, put a bit of a chamfer on there. So now we can, with our tweezers, we can fit that in and it will sit in the groove lovely, just like that. Okay, and then drop of extra thin, let it capillary down, and a drop at the bottom, just like that. And there we go. There we are, that's that in. There we go. It just needs to be that piece, that forward piece there just wants to sit. There we go. Let's give it a little tweak, make it go back. And then the Brush full of extra thin in the back of it. There we go. Now I've completely changed this build process, guys. So if you just pick this up and you look at it, you think that's not nothing like the instructions say. No, it's not. Um, go back and watch my other videos, and you'll especially part five, and you'll see why I've done this. There's many reasons for it. Um, there we go. Right, so we can cross those parts off. C15 and G41. Obviously, I'm not going to put these levers in yet because they're going to be very fragile and get broken when I try and get some paint and decals and stuff in there. And then this seat is just going to drop down and sit on the top of there like that. So whether you need to cut those corners off, I do not know because I couldn't get it to stay in place and dry fitted. But um, obviously the corners don't matter because you can't see them. But I was thinking with this with this raised area here, I was thinking it might be impossible to get the seat to go down. So I just cut those corners off just to make some room for it to fit. So there's our seat. So that is F17. Just in case there's a similar seat in the back. It was F17, wasn't it? Yeah. Believe me, my memories were still working. I'm 60 years old and my memory still works. Amazing. Right, so I'm going to wait for that glue to dry. The other thing I wanted to look at was here. Uh, when we fit this axle, as you know, there's a bit of clearance. Um, it's like it's the axles are wider than the chassis. So I just want to look on here if I could actually remove some material to make make it all go together a bit better. What I was thinking was if I take a, a sanding stick on here, I go like that, reduce the thickness, and then do the same on here. Reduce the thickness, put this back on, like so, and then take this one off, and then reduce the thickness, it may help a bit because basically what's happening is these springs fit into these two tabs here and they um, they're actually wider than the axles so when you've got it together there's a load of play in it like you can see there but um, if we so if we can remove some material See, we've got play there. Um, so if we remove some material, even if I drill those through. Let me have a think about this. Okay, so what I'm trying here, I've got a, this is like a five millimetre ball cutter. And I'm just going to just put a chamfer on the inside edge, as it were, a radius really, but it's like a chamfer just to allow the axles to go a bit deeper into the spring just like so and as you can see now that um, take a bit more out of that one the little ridge that's on the axle will sit into that little chamfer so it'll allow the springs to go closer together more towards the center of the axles 
So let's just see how that goes now. Idiot. Put it back together upside down. There we go. So that's the front, that's the back. That's going to go like that. That's going to go like that. Oh, go in. There we go. And that's it. That's done it. You can see now that we have, we still have a tiny, tiny little bit of play there, but it's nothing like it was before. So I'm just going to take a little bit more out of there and then it will fit in there nice and snug. Okay, really. you know, if, if you're watching Jeff's build as well, you'll see that he um, came up with the idea as well, same as me, don't glue these brake drums on. Um, his reason was because they're sticking out so far. My reason is because they're all wobbly. Now he did mention that on the back of these brake drums, um, I thought I'd left one out with them on. Uh, when you get these brake drums out of the box, they have these massive great Z pins on the back of them, which I would normally just snap off, just like so. Now he suggested that <clears throat> they're going to foul on the wheel. They don't. Um, I don't think they do anyway. But that goes on there like so. I'll put that one away because it hasn't been cleaned up. But basically, if you get brought those Z-pins, you can see that what's actually happening is this. I've mentioned this in one of my videos. Uh, where's my pointy stick? This edge here, okay, that corner there is actually sitting on that chamfer there. All right, so what's basically happening is that is rocking. And if you remember, I mentioned this before, my suggestion would be to fit these brake drums to the rear axle like so. We've got to get those brake actuators lined up. And you can see that on here they're like a prick in the top out as well. So my suggestion is to put those on there, get them on there nice and solid, or uh, we'll get them glued on, and then with all four on there, put a pair of blocks against it and have it all held up parallel. Now, they don't actually sit on those brake drums anyway. The axles are actually sitting, they're actually sitting on them on this bit here at the bottom. Now to glue these brake drums on, that means you have to glue the brake drum to the axle, which means you have to glue the axle to the spring. So if you've got any twist or anything in this, then it's now you need to get rid of it. The other thing is you also need to make sure that you've got no twist that way. So nothing like this and no twist that way. So it all needs to be nice and square. So my suggestion would be get a couple of long parallel bars. You've seen me use them before. I have them here. These, these are just 20 millimeter square foot long aluminium bars. Um, and get those alongside your chassis with the brake drums done like so and that will have them that will get them parallel upright square everything you need just like that and then you can actually pull those together you could even clamp them and then you can make sure the chassis remains central around those and you can see that you can by manipulating it you can move the chassis so you can get the chassis nice and square and then you know the wheels are going to be pointing directly forward and the blocks are keeping the brake drums vertical. Now, I might decide to paint all this separately. I may glue it now. I don't know. But um, what I don't want to do is glue these points here. OK. We also need to make sure that those, axles, those springs are well over. Now, for some reason. Right. Found another problem, guys. What's happening here? It's not it's not pushing the springs up against the they're away they're they're if I do this now if I hold the axle and I hold the brake drum you can see the spring the spring is not up against the axle well the brake drum is not up against so what we can do now is either sand some material off the end of the axle drill these out 
or both. Um, I'm glad I've noticed that because they are not actually pulling, they're not pulling the springs together. Do, 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 do. Let me have a think about that. I may actually make up a shape. Hey, I've had a little think and basically what I've decided. With the chassis sat down on the bench, it's sitting on those four points which are consistent. So we know we've got our squareness that way. The springs are free to move on the axle even with the brake drums attached. So what I'm going to do is just put a drop of glue in the bottom of the brake drum and then fit it on and then we'll, we'll press it all into place. And hopefully we won't get any glue getting onto the spring to I'll put a drop of glue in there as well. Hopefully we won't get any glue getting onto the spring to, um, to axle interface. And that way the axle will still be free to move on the spring. Um, has that gone in the hole? Yes, it has. So I'm hoping this works. If it doesn't, then it's not the end of the world. As long as we get the wheels in the right place, that's all that matters. I'm not too worried about glue oozing back up onto the springs, because as I say, the fit of these is like a prick in a top hat. Or like Chuck of a sausage up Park Street, as he used to say in Bristol. So that's those. And then... We'll do that, but drop a cement on there instead. Drop on there, and a drop on there. It should be enough just to hold it all in place and then once we can get the springs all tightly up against the axles then we should be good to go. That hasn't gone in the hole on the actuator. There we go. And then finally this one here. Drop on there. And then actuator first and then up onto the axle. Right, so I'm also going to get out my away clamps. I'm going to get my one, two, three blocks out as well. I'm going to get these parallel blocks here. So I'm going to sit the chassis on its brake drums, just like so. Okay, so it's not sitting on those four points. And then, I should be able to put these blocks on here and make sure that everything stays parallel. What I'm worried about is, because the brake drums are like a prick in a top hat, it may have movement that way. So what I may be doing now is gluing them in place. I suppose what we can do is do this. Make sure everything's nice and square. So we'll get rid of those. Make sure everything's nice and square. And then with our pointy tool, we can just push down on each one because it's got play on the end of the axle. So there we are. We'll just make sure the springs are up against the axles just in case any glue did get on them. So we should still be able to, we should be able to splay those out and still remove the lot and be able to spray it on the bench on the, as a separate piece. But I just want to check once finally, I just want to check all those brake actuators are in their holes. Yes, they are. So once again, I'll put that together like so. If we want to, we can a clamp on it. In fact, I don't think the clamp will go wide enough. No, it won't. There's one here with the pad missing. And of course, it's the one I can't find. Okay. Um, we've actually got this horrible thing here. We can put that on there. Put that on there just to put a little bit of pressure. So it just needs to be a little bit of pressure, that's all. Nothing much. We can hold that in there. There we go, and that's how we're going to make sure everything's nice and square. Obviously, the axles aren't yet fitted to the glued to the springs, we hope, and the springs aren't glued to the chassis. So that doesn't matter. That way we can have the chassis up here. Um, the only thing that matters is, is the squareness of the axles in relation to each other. 
These things are pathetic. I really don't see their purpose. If you're designed as a clamp and you can't clamp, then really what is the point in your existence? There we go. Whoops. I know that steering column's going to get snapped off. I know it is. Right. So there we go. I'm going to leave that for a while and let that just gel off. And then I'll see if I can get those springs together. All right, so now we've got that uh, joint sanded around there now. Um, I, it looks like they are actually separate blocks in the um, in the pictures I've seen. So I'm not going to fill those. We'll wait and see how that comes out. So this here is going to go on to there. Nice big positive location for a change. So that's going to go on like that. Okay. And then we've got this one here is going to go onto there. Notice I always glue afterwards so we don't get any oozage. Whoops. There we go. Again, nice positive location for a change. Just run some cement down there quickly and that's that glued in. And then the horn, um, I'm kind of worried it's going to get snapped off, but it should go to the right way up. The, the little two wiring points are at the top. So I'm just going to put a drop of cement in there. That's probably going to get broken off, but hey ho, we can glue it back on. There we go. That's that in place. So that's our bulkhead finished. So we go back through the manual again and cross off these bits. Um, here we go, that's that all done, and 81 as well. So that's, we've got those pedals to do still, so I to get them. So, uh, well, I suppose we could actually put those in now, really, couldn't we? Again, you can see you've got absolutely tiny, tiny little connection points for them. Oh, right. Holes in there are tiny. I suppose we could actually put those in there, couldn't we? May as well. Right, let's get them off there the screen. We, we can see those little pedals in there. They've got KB on them, <laughs> clutch and brake, I'm guessing. So um, if I built one of these again, which I probably won't, I would actually drill those holes out a little bit deeper and have the whole shaft go in because I think they're going to be very easily broken off if they're not. And again, you know, I'm not talking about playing with the model, I'm talking about when you're dry brushing it, stuff like that. We have to be very, very careful with this one. So, uh, there we go. So that's our cab interior, pretty much finished. So we can cross those off. Um, that's that page. No, it's not. I've got the, the fenders to do. So, yeah. Um, Got that fender there to do as well. This is all done. We haven't put those. There's, there's lots of bits and pieces that we haven't done. Um, right. We've also got those those two um, leather backings to go on. We'll put those. We'll paint those separately and glue them on rather than have to do masking and stuff. Same with the seat base. Uh, we've also got rifles to add in here into those little holes. We'll put those in afterwards. And obviously, I can't put the gear stick in yet because it goes into a hole and goes in the top of the transmission. Um, and the handbrake could go in, but that'll probably get in the way of fitting the seat. So we'll put that in after and then touch up the floor, put some dirt around the base of it or something. Um, windscreen, we're not going to do that yet. We've done the doors. We've done all this. Well, I'm not worried about seats and transport mode and everything and all this. So I think now we can start looking at assembling this rear part of the body while, while the axles on that are drying. Um, I think we can look at assembling this rear part of the body. So we need this here, and then this here, and then we'll carry on. Right, okay, a few hours later now, and the glue's all nice and dry. And as you can see, we've got those, those brake drums on, and they're all nice and parallel and everything. If they're not perfect, don't worry about it, because as I showed you before, it's almost like a ball and socket. You can actually, you've got, you've got some movement in the wheel so you can concentrate on getting them straight if your brake drums aren't and also the other thing is because of the way we did it with the glue on the end of the axle only we've still got the the twistability so we've got this pivot here and we've got 
the the ability to twist so we can guarantee we're going to get all the wheels on the ground that would be great because uh, at the moment you know we're relying on these down here and if they're not whoops if they're not perfectly um aligned or whatever then uh, you know if we glue everything solid now then we might end up with a wheel off in the air so um the engine just fell out so there we go right so moving on in the instructions um as i said we're going to crash on with this and my intention is to maybe build the whole body up we shall see so i've got the parts off the sprue got them all cleaned up there was a wealth of ejector pin marks on here so they're all gone um there were some on here these outer two i would thoroughly recommend filling that these don't worry about here but um this here becomes the ammo box and if you're going to have it with these any of these doors open you're going to see that there that wall there which is which is that there okay so get there, get rid of those um that would be my advice so uh right so we have b4 here we have b4 there and we have c3 and c4 to go on the way to identify these if you've got them off the sprue and you haven't labeled them they go you can see they have a like a recess in the bottom edge and that recess goes in so that's going to sit in there okay so i'm going to be using using more super glue on this in a minute because basically we've gone to the trouble of doing all these ejector pin marks i'm actually going to fill in this seam here and i also want to come in and fill in the seams that the holes that are going to be left behind from the um i'll leave that to gel off a second i'm going to put some cement in here first which i very rarely do <clears throat> We'll leave that to gel off and then we'll get them straight. So there we are, I got some cement in there. So uh, very nice fit, very um, very almost seamless. So now they've gelled off slightly, you know, just give it a 30 seconds, just let the glue just gel off, and then we'll just put a flat surface on there and push over to it, and a flat surface on there and push over to it. There we go. So that's like that. That's like that. Right. Nice and solid. There we go. I just noticed I got some super glue splashed on there. So I'm going to quickly get rid of that. There we go. So there we are. That's that done. We'll have a look at those again in a minute once the glue sort of really started to gel off. So we've got to put these pieces in here. So we've got these C5s, one of my favourite aircraft. So we have, sorry, I've almost put them on the wrong side. So they're going to have done a plastic monkey again. It's worth remembering on here as well, um, it was like Marco said in one of his um, messages to me, it's like every part you need to sand around the edge. It's almost like it has a mould seam. The other thing I forgot to say was there's, um, on here, you've got those horrible sprue tabs that come over onto the front face because you've got this thin edge. So um, make sure if you've got any little, little undercuts in there, just make sure you fill them because they're going to be very prominent because that is the back top edge. That's where the shelf's going to sit and your gun's going to sit in here. So that there is going to be very visible. So make sure you've got a nice seam there. So um, what we're going to do is do the outer two first. I don't think this needs to be particularly tidy. Well, they're a nice fit in there, aren't they? That's a really tight fit in there, so I'm going to actually just thin it down a bit because it's kind of trying to spring back out. I'm guessing they are symmetrical. Get some cement in there and that should help them go down. I'm not really too worried how these look. I think these are like little compartments. But if you're not going to have the doors open that lead into them, you're never going to see them. So not really worth fussing about too much. But there, we're modelers. We're not there for uh, speed. We're there for entertainment. There we go. Lego brick to stay nice and square, as suggested by one of my followers. Thank you. That was a better fit. glue in there and then I'm going to do this outer one next lay 
into there like that. <clears throat> Nice and solid, let the glue just sort of just tack off just for a few seconds and then we can get our Lego brick in there. Check. I'm not sure the Lego bricks are perfectly square. They probably must have a draft on them. They're probably slightly um a draft to get them out of the mould. But um I was actually at Arburg once buying a uh, buying a moulding machine and I was always told by the company I work for to wear my Company shirt when I'm at when I'm at um, suppliers and proudly show the name. And uh, when I was there, Lego were there, and I met one of their purchasing guys. And he's like, "Hi, nice to meet you." And I sort of thing. He said, uh, "What are you buying?" I said, "I'm oh, buying the um, I can't remember what machine it was. That was a something something twenty five. And uh, I said, "What are you buying?" He said, "Oh, we go for these over here." It was a one a 10 or a 12 or something and I said all right he said yeah we've just ordered 133 of them 113 of them I said, all right okay I feel really proud now to be wearing my company shirt <laughs> should have got some freebies off them shouldn't I when you actually go to Arburg Lego is one of their biggest customers Arburg I think are the Rolls Royce of injection molding machines and um if you go to Arburg, at the front of the factory, there's like a, a an area with coffee machines and stuff, or food machines, I think. And you, you can sit down there and have a little, you know, it's like a, a glorified waiting room, if you like, if you're waiting to see someone. But it's not the, uh, you know, it's not for, it's for um, shop floor people. And they've got a factory layout made of Lego and all the Arburg machines there are made of Lego. It's absolutely fantastic. So if you're ever in the Black Forest, look them up. Harburg. And uh, yeah, they are. They employ, they're in Lossburg and they employ more people than live in Lossburg. There we go. And if you do go there, try the Aspin, I think it's Aspin sale, is it? The draft Pilsner. It's um it's brewed in the Black Forest about a mile down the road and it is absolutely stunning. Right, so that's that done. As I say, not really too worried about it because it's if if you're gonna close these doors up, which I probably will, you're never gonna see it. Now this is gonna fit onto that ledge. We've got all these doors and everything going on here in the seat backs. I'm obviously not going to fit the seat backs because they're going to be leather. The doors, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with them yet, so I'm not going to fit them. But I'm assuming we have a raised lip on here, but only on the mudguard parts. So I'm assuming that's going to go on like that. Again, Instructions clear as mud. Yes, it does. You can see how it fits. And it also leaves a step because we've also got a step on the back of this part here. So that's also going to go in there. So this, in effect, is going to sit on there like that. On that step, he says. The same as it's going to sit on there. So... I think what I'll do is wait for all this to dry. That for some reason that top one, that one there keeps turning itself in. It doesn't want to stay vertical. Stay vertical, you swine. Swine hunt. There we go. And that's gonna glue on there somehow. I think what I'm gonna do is wait for this to dry, and then in fact I'm not even gonna wait for it to dry, I'm just gonna do it now. Give it a very light sanding to make sure there's no sticky out bits. Make sure there's no sticky out bits on here as well. This was covered in uh, Z pins. Or Z pins. <laughs> I like to call them Z pins. All right, so that's gonna go on like that. So we can get some extra thin into there. 
just like so. Get some into there, just like so. Drop on there, drop on there. And then we may as well run some in there, aren't we? Just for show, just for shits and giggles, as you say. Right. And there we are. And we also need to get some glue on that bottom edge, don't we? So we'll get some glue, cement, sorry, cement. We'll get some cement across this bottom edge. It's going to be quite a strong joint, this one. And then that, as I say, that is going to sit on the back of there like that. What a beautiful fit that is. That needs to be slightly turned in, but wait for it all to dry first. So, yeah, very nice indeed. I'm going to put some more cement on those frames because they're going to keep everything vertical. There we go. So that's that done. As I say, that's going to sit on there like that. Almost tempted to glue it on now. So I want to get in here and deal with all in here because basically you, you, you may be thinking, what's the point? It's underneath. But if you're going to get your model and turn it over and show someone all the detail, you know, it's nice to it's nice to see, you know, not see that up above there. So I'm going to fill those in, let them dry, get them sanded down. And that'll be that. And here we are. We've got nine minutes left of the camera. That means this video is about an hour long. So um, that's plenty long enough. Um, we've got that box there for the spare wheel, I believe that is. No, that's a box underneath. So it probably had two spare wheels. That's just a box. OK, that's going to go on the back of the chassis. We're not going to fit that yet. That's going to go on the back of the chassis. And then that. That there I've just built. And then that there is going to go down onto there. So that's going to actually sit on top of here. Again, I just don't know what's going on here. So that is going to sit roughly like that. This is going to sit like that and then we got that box there so that yeah that is going to sit on top of that so there we are so that's going to be where your ammo bins are in there i need to look into this as well and see what color that would be i'm not sure if that would have been painted white in there um we'll have that we have got photographs of that area with the doors open so it might be like a light gray or a white or something um a lot of internal areas are on on vehicles aren't they so um yeah, and then we're on to the side panels. So we're really getting on with this body now. Right, I'm going to see you all soon for part seven. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to fill that in, get those ejected bin marks, get these um, glued marks filled in. I, I may glue that onto there to let it set. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. It's probably a little bit risky to do it right now because I'd rather do it when we glue the sides on because I may glue this on now and then find that it wanted to be sort of more like that or like that or maybe like that. So, um, yeah, I'll see you all soon for part seven. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe down there, the little square with my face in it. You can hit that. I expect you like to hit my face and, um, and then you'll be subscribed. And if you want to get notified of when I'm putting any videos out, you can hit the notifications bell. So I will see you all soon. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.